Happy holidays! It's the time of year for festive treats and holiday cookies. So I'm making a delicious gingerbread cookie saison. It's lightly spiced and subtly sweet. It's easy to brew, can be ready in little as a week, and makes a perfect holiday homebrew. I'm Trent Musho, and this is The Brew Show. Let's make this gingerbread cookie saison. For the holidays this year, I wanted to make something that fit with the flavors of the season. And there are a lot of ingredients in gingerbread that would complement a saison, as they're known for their spicy qualities. I'm going to be layering in ginger, cinnamon, nutmeg, brown sugar, molasses, and vanilla. And for the saison to live up to its peppery name, we'll also enhance the flavors with the hops I choose, the yeast, and how warm we ferment. This is going to be a fun one. Before we get started, please take a second to subscribe so you can learn more about how to brew your own beer at home. Now, let's brew. For this recipe, I'm making a five gallon batch using the brew in a bag method. As always, I'll have the recipe and products I use in the description box. To start, I heat up six gallons of water to 157 degrees. I'm adding some water adjustments to improve the flavor, and here's the water profile I'm aiming for. Water adjustments are not required, but if you're interested in taking your beer to the next level, I recommend you doing some research on the topic. They can have a major impact on your brew. Once the water is heated up, I add the grain bag, and next I'll add the grains. For that, I'm using 75% Belgian pale malt for the base malt, 8.2% biscuit malt for some nice doughy flavor, 4.2% Caravian for added color and bready flavor, 4.2% flaked wheat for added mouthfeel and head retention, and then later at the end of the boil, I'll be adding 4.2% each of brown sugar and blackstrap molasses, the iconic duo in gingerbread cookies. I'm using blackstrap molasses, which is the deepest, darkest, and most bitter version of molasses. I gave all my malts except the flaked wheat a double crush to help us get a boost in efficiency in the mash. Flaked grains don't need to be crushed. They can go in whole since the flaking process already opens them up for extraction. I plan to mash at 151 for 45 minutes. 151 degrees is just below the standard temperature I usually use for a mash, and I'm hoping that this will help drive our funnel gravity down making the saison a bit more dry. After the 45 minutes, I pull the grain bag out and squeeze as much as the wart out that I can. I also heat up one gallon of water to 170 degrees to sparge, or rinse the grains, to try and get as much sugars out of the grain as I can. Then I toss the grains in the compost. Now I bring the wort to a boil. I plan to boil for 30 minutes. Once the boil is started, I added 2 oz of Hollertel middle fruit for a total of 25 IBUs. I'm using Hollertel mainly as a bittering hop and I'm not looking for a ton of flavor from it, but it's also known to have spicy notes to it, so that will play nicely with the spices I'll be adding later in the boil. Then at the 15 minute mark, I add a Wolflock tablet for clarity and a wort chiller for cooling down later once the boil is stopped. Finally, at the end of the 30 minutes, I turn off the heat. At this point, I'm going to add my gingerbread flavor additions. Starting with spices, I add a half tablespoon of ginger, a half tablespoon of cinnamon, and a fourth a teaspoon of nutmeg. Nutmeg can also be strong, so be careful. Then I'm going to add equal parts brown sugar and molasses. For my recipe, this is about four ounces each. The brown sugar will mainly add to our original gravity and boost alcohol content, while the molasses will also add fermentable sugars as well as a bit of bitterness. What favorite holiday treat do you think would make a good beer? Do you have a favorite cookie you love to eat this time of year? Now I turn on the wort chiller and chill down to 80 degrees. I also take an original gravity reading and get 1.064. If you want more alcohol, you can always add more brown sugar. For yeast, I'm using White Labs Belgian Saison WLP568. But before pitching, I need to make sure that I have enough yeast growth for a healthy fermentation. So let's back up to one day ago. A day before the brew, I made what is called a yeast starter, which in simple terms is a mini batch of wort that I pitch yeast in to grow the yeast colony. This will help ensure there are plenty of healthy yeast to eat through the sugars and so that I don't get a stuck fermentation or any yeast stress that will result in off flavors. To do this, I make the wort using DME or dry malt extract. And by simply adding water to it, you instantly have wort. This is commonly sold at all homebrew stores. We're looking for a wart with a gravity of about 1.030 to 
And an easy way to get there is to use a ratio of 100 grams DME to one liter of water. Heat up your one liter of water in a small pot. And once it hits a boil, turn off the heat and add the DME. Then mix and turn back on the heat, boiling for about 15 minutes. Keep an eye on it though, because if it boils over, you'll have the mess of a century to clean up. Then cool it down to pitching temps and pour into a clean, sanitized growler or small fermenter. Lastly, toss in your yeast and then cover it with some sanitized tin foil. If you're like me and you don't have a fancy stir plate, then you can just give it a shake every hour or so. And by the next morning, you should see some fermentation activity, letting you know your starter is ready to pitch. Back on brew day, I now pitch the yeast starter into the fermenter and give it a good shake to incorporate. I then top with a piece of sanitized aluminum foil, similar to my hibiscus saison video, where I explained that saison yeast can be a bit sensitive to pressure, so that means by putting an airlock on, you can create too much pressure on the yeast and give you a stuck fermentation. It's not always the case, but I'd rather be safe than sorry here. Since this is a Belgian yeast, it's recommended to ferment this beer at warmer temperatures to promote esters and phenols that give us fruity and spicy notes desired in the style. So I'm planning to ferment this one at 78 degrees for three to four days. This will also greatly speed up fermentation time. If you have a really warm area, like by a heater, you can set the fermenter there. But I have this nifty fermenter heater and temperature regulator. The way it works is I tape the heater to the fermenter and then plug it into the temp regulator in the heating port. Then I set my desired temp and how much I want the temp to fall before it kicks back on. I also tape the temperature probe to the fermenter on the opposite side of the heat wrap and then just let it ride. In the summer, I usually don't have to worry about heating my fermenter, but in the winter, it certainly helps for these styles that like it hot. After about four days, once fermentation bubbling on top of the beer slowed down, I took a final gravity reading and got 1.008, meaning this beer comes in at 7.4%. We officially have beer. So then I began to transfer into a keg. I purged the keg with CO2 before opening it up and turning the spigot on my fermenter. I added five milliliters of Biofine Clear, a vegan alternative to promote clarity in beer, and additionally, I added my final ingredient, one ounce of pure vanilla extract for just a kiss of vanilla flavor to pay respects to the gingerbread. I then closed up the keg and set the PSI to 30 and burst carbonated the keg for 24 hours before reducing the pressure down to serving pressure. And after a few days, it was ready to drink. The beer has a beautiful, rich, golden color. While very dark, the molasses did not have a huge impact on the color. The light amber hue is coming from the Caravian malt we added. And taking a smell of the beer, I get spicy and fruity notes coming from the yeast. There's a slight hint of warm and spices we added as well. And wow, this is easy to drink. Not overly sweet and more on the dry side, so I could definitely have a few. There's actually a hint of bitterness and earthiness coming from the hops and blackstrap and molasses. I love how it's lightly spiced and not overwhelming. The ginger adds a peppery note, while the nutmeg adds a nutty, sweet spiciness. The vanilla is barely there, but I get a touch of it at the end. It has a slightly creamy mouthfeel, but the body isn't too thick, again making it very easy to drink. Just watch out, because that 7.4% ABV will really sneak up on you. Almost like it's fresh out of the oven, but better. The cold weather months are upon us, so pull on a warm sweater and embrace the festive flavors. Perhaps you can give some out to friends and family. Check out my homebrew gifting guide if you haven't seen it. Get toasty this holiday season and give this recipe a try. And be sure to let me know if you do. Happy holidays and thanks for watching.